Let's take a look at how to graph a function using a calculator. And for this particular video, I'm going to use my TI-89 graphing calculator. So the idea that we have is that we have a function and we definitely want to know what it looks like. We can use our graphing calculator to help out, but here's some additional tips to make sure that this goes smoothly. Before we put in our function, we want to make sure that the mode is set to function. This will make sure that we can put the parameters in the right spot. We'll also want to set our window to a standard window so that our x values are between negative 10 and 10 and our y values are between negative 10 and 10. Lastly, if we want to check values in our function, we can use the table feature or the value feature. Don't worry, I'll go through all three of these as we're putting our function into the calculator. So the first thing that we want to do is just make sure that our graphing calculator is set up to enter in this function. To do that, let's go ahead and press mode and see what it is set to. The first option on the TI-89 says graph and it should say function. If you press your right arrow key, you can see some other options that you can set it to. This is handy for differential equations, polar coordinates, and some other types of different functions. I want to make sure function is selected, then I'll press enter and enter one more time. Now that we know that our mode is set, let's go ahead and press our green button and F1 to go to the Y equals screen. Here's where I will type in the right side of my function. So I have negative square root of 2x minus 1, close parentheses. Press enter and that will store it into the calculator. Now before I actually go to my graphing screen, I want to double check the window. Press your green button and then F2 for the window. Here's where you can set the minimum and maximum values for your x and your y. It's good to start out with x min at negative 10 and x max at 10 and the same thing for your y min and your y max. You may also notice that it says x SCL, and that stands for the scale on the x-axis, and there's another one for the scale on the y-axis. Here's how to interpret both of these values. Every time you see a tick mark on the x-axis, it equals 1. And every time you see a tick mark on the y-axis, it also equals 1. Sometimes for larger graphs, you want to set a different value so that every tick value is, say, 1,000. But usually it's good to just start with these guys at 1 and 1. All right, let's press our green button in F3 and see what this graph looks like. You can see that the calculator has drawn the graph and we have a good idea as to what it looks like. Now, for some types of functions, you may not see the entire picture. If it, you're wondering, you know, if I really do have the entire picture, do I need to reset my window? Then it's not about a bad idea to go back into your window and try some different values. I'm going to leave my window at negative 10 to 10 on my x and y axis uh, because I'm pretty sure that this is the graph of my function. Now one additional thing that you can do is check the values that the calculator is using to graph. And you can do this by using your table. First press your green button in F4 to see how your table is set. Usually the first value is 0 and the second value is 1. That means the table starts at 0, and then every number after that goes up or down by 1. I like how things are set right now, so I'm just going to press Enter to save it. Then I'll press my green button and F5 to actually look at that table. So as you can see, my x values start at 0, and they go up by 1 every time. And the values that I get out of my function are displayed under y1. So here are all those values. You can see that some of them are undefined because it can't graph when a negative is underneath the square root. This is good if you just want to verify that the, you know, the values that you actually plug in uh, are what the calculator is seeing. Let's go back to the graph. Green button, graph. Another way that you can double check some of the values into the calculator is to use the value feature. To use that, press F5 to see your math menu. The first option on there says value, so press enter, 
and then you could give it any type of x value that you want. So let's go ahead and give it a value like, let's say 5. When I press enter, it will give me the corresponding y value, negative 3, and I have this little bullseye on where that shows up on the graph. So hopefully this helps you when starting to graph functions, and you can figure out all of the different features and see what it looks like.